What's up, everybody, and welcome to Around the Tabletop uh, for the first time of our new setting. We are doing uh, Dungeons and Dragons, sort of a retooling of the, what our old tabletop show was. Uh, and I am joined at this time by Zach, Pridge, Jason, Rob, and David. That's right, we're using regular human names. Uh, this this is a and d based in the Dark Waters of Bilgewater uh, module provided by Wizards of the Coast and Riot that is provided until uh, they no longer provide it at the end of this month because there was apparently some weird falling out with the two companies. I don't know, fam. Uh, but other than that, I have uh, modified and written this thing heavily and we got some stuff afterwards if we if we like this whole, whole setup. So, uh, we're going to go right. down the line. Everyone's going to introduce uh, their characters, what they're playing, and give us a little bit, a little bit of backstory, at least like what they're comfortable with their character sharing at this time. Zach, take it away. Yes, yeah, so my character is, uh, his name is Basilio. He is from Ishtal, the jungles of Ishtal. Um, he, his class is kind of a custom class. It is mostly made from the Echo Fighter, uh, which is a subclass made uh, for fighters by Matt Mercer, but uh, a little bit of the Battlemaster mixed in. So uh, also because there's a character literally named Echo, I'm going to call him a Chrono Fighter. That is my clever workaround, just so I don't screw it up. Um, Did you but, contemplate the fact that Echo, the character, uses time travel? Well, yeah, I mean, but, okay, so does my character, kind <laughs> That's of. That's fair. Basically, oh. uh, 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 an Echo fighter, or in my case, a Chrono fighter, their whole thing is that they can project different, like, alternate timelines of themselves on the battlefield, fighter, their whole thing and those timelines actually have like wait to them obviously by like swing a sword with that timeline they can actually attack and take damage um however they do not count as a creature so they cannot be targeted by like mass or they can't be targeted by a spell they have to be hit directly um which kind of gives them they only have one hp so if they get hit at all they are donezo but interesting okay don't worry i'll kill them off for you <laughs> i'm sure he will i'm sure he will thunder wave motherfucker. Um, <laughs> but uh yeah he's he's uh out exploring the world right now and uh, I think that is all I'm going to say about that. How long has he been in Bilgewater? Uh, probably about like a week to a month. Um, basically, he came here. He was kind of tricked. He's he's being from Ishtal. He has not seen the larger world and does not know much about it. And uh, he was taken here on a ship from uh, just outside the jungles of Ishtal, uh, being told that there is, you know, good good wealth and treasure and power here. And uh, he's not enjoying himself, but he does have no money, so he's taking <laughs> any any jobs he can to get out of Bilgewater. Happens to this the is, best of his us. current his current motivation. <laughs> All right, Pridge, give us a little more uh, color on Bilgewater with your guy. All right, so my character's name is Ebrak. Um, he is a humanoid Vestaya, originally from the western coast of Ionia, where he basically was in a part of an isolated uh, Vestaya tribe who um, have shark-esque uh, animal traits. So he spent the first about 300 some years of his life as part of an isolated tribe. But um, following the Noxian invasion, he decided he was tired of his shelter and life and he went to go explore the world. Uh, he learned about Bilgewater as a free city and that, uh, that ideal attracted him greatly. So about 10, so about eight years ago, approximately, he wound up in Bilgewater. And since then, he has made a living for himself as a laborer at the slaughter docks. Uh, because as, as long as you're willing to work, there's a place for you at the slaughter docks. Um, and that's just how he likes it. So he has been enjoying his freedom, making his living, and basically living life on his own terms, just like he's always wanted. Right. He is also a uh, barbarian, Path of the Berserker. Uh, my name is uh, Yardle. I'm a Yordle. Somebody had to be it, and I'm definitely ready for it. Don't worry. Uh, we are a Arcadia trickster, and it's a variant of the rogue. Um, they're basically the Arcadia is like a bunch of Greek features for him. So I'm like Odysseus if he was a Yordle. So that's an insult <laughs> to Odysseus right there. Ooh. Uh, Anyway, I, I left Vandal City after, uh, let's just say some artifacts, foreign artifacts uh, were like left there by people who were snuck in, whatever. I got intrigued by them, never have seen them. I'm like, there's way more stuff to this, you know, Rune Terror than just Vandal City can offer. So I got to get out of here. And I became sort of like an archaeologist, sort of just like a little like rogue traveling dungeons and stuff, trying to pick up as many artifacts, kind of scouring the, uh, the realm for anything that I thought was just 
interesting or, you know, could be, you know, trinketed or whatnot. Um, good at firearms, but not, you know, uh, stern enough to join the army like Timo or Tristana. So they are pretty sad by that, but I had to do what I had to do. Uh, the reason I'm in Bilgewater is because I, uh, Ezreal's beaten me everywhere else. Uh, I want to be the first to leave his stamp as an explorer in Bilgewater. I heard you have to have guts to go there. That's what I've got plenty of because I don't have anything else but that. Uh, so I'm going to be hopefully laying my stamp on uh, Bilgewater and exploring what is or isn't there because it sounds like there could be just peril instead of actual goods and treasures. So I just got there fresh off the boat. So I don't know what the hell is going on, but at least I'm not as poor as that guy over there. That's what, so. that's what uh, they always say about Yarno. He's young, dumb, and full of, you know. Yeah. Um, uh, he, so he's using the, uh, sniper replacement, which is a, uh, thing added in the, uh, Bilgewater module to basically allow for the existence of guns, uh, cause guns are a thing in Yeah, Zero. it's just a crossbow, but flavor. It's, a exactly, it's, they're just regular range weapons that are flavors of that guns. I, I may or may not have stolen from Hyrule Digger. Nice. Sure is out on that. These, know, he are, offered, um, so. these are the uh, apparently the worst guns ever. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> because they do like 12 damage, which is like, that's what it's guns D, do, it's sure. A D, it's a D8. D8, yeah. that's pathetic. All right, uh, Rob, go ahead. Uh, my character's name is Deltrum. He is from the Frail Lord. Frail Lord? Frail Yord. Frail Yord, there you go. You got there you go. Got, got, got in three, got, got in it. three. He's <laughs> from the Frail Yord. Uh, he's just from some random... Uh, sort of tribe. He was sort of the the mage of the tribe, and he left to find some more uh, wizard uh, abilities, essentially. Uh, so my character's name is Akram Nagabrios. I am one of the Buru within. I think that's how you say that. Is it, is nope. it Buru? <laughs> yeah. oh. I've heard, I've <laughs> yeah, heard yeah, Buru yeah. and Buru. I will accept either. Uh, Buru sounds better. Uh, Buru so sounds I'm one of the Buru who are the natives of kind of the Bilgewater Islands. Yes, um, Seven Isles. So I am a cleric to the Kraken god Naga Naga Kaboros. Mm. <laughs> I think I got that right. You did. Yeah. Uh, and I'm one of the younger members of the clergy here, so I'm a little more with the times than a lot of the older members of the clergy. So I interact more with the bilge water pirates and uh, i'm not unfamiliar with the untastefulness of all the people that live in bilge water and the city in general because that shit city is kind of nasty mm -hmm. all right now if i do this little magic trick we should have everyone's character names boom hey. oh. magic. <laughs> movie Look magic at that. and uh with that oh, we'll hear a little bit more from the characters in a bit but uh, sit back, because uh, I have to read some things. For a second, I thought you were like, I have a planned video now. <laughs> <laughs> I was Hello, like, and welcome to Bilgewater. You... I'll be your tour guide. <laughs> <laughs> All right. <clears throat> it's afternoon in Bilgewater, creeping closer and closer to late afternoon by the minute, and the sun slowly makes its way down the sky, perching on one of the many tall cliffs that surround the main port. The harbor and slaughter docks are abuzz with all of the scrappers, pirates, shippers, and various other members of Bilgewater society, all on their own specific set of legitimacy and dubious natures. Chests of goods, mountains of scrap, and the fresh meat of monsters slain in the serpent bays are all carted from ships just the same, brought to many of the weighing, cleaning, and cutting stations of the slaughter docks, where Bilgewater youth and the like take to task while exchanges of debts and such are settled between ship captains, crews, and the oh-so-stingy merchants and junkmongers of the city. But even as the great mass of day sailors, fishermen, and the like settle into the bay and get ready for whatever their evenings might entail, we find our story starting a bit further up into the nestling coves of Bilgewater. Not high up in the upper rungs in the eeries of the city, but in a place familiar just to just about everyone in Bilgewater, we start down the lower rung of city, Rat Town. The planks of Rat Town Walk are made of a mix of scuttled ships, lumber stolen or brought off ships that came too close to the port, uh, or even from the trees from when the island was young and mostly populated by its Baru inhabitants. There's a faint wetness to the planks that is either a sign of a morning storm that hasn't quite dried, or perhaps some high leaping waves from beneath the planks in those ever so creaky spots where the boardwalk goes straight down to the sea below. Rat Town has its various sights and smells that are impossible to miss, and of course the eponymous wharf rats are a threat best ignored all their own. 
you have your gambling parlors, houses of ill refute, places to buy anything a pirate or a private party might be looking for, for a price of course, and of course you have the hallmark of village water, endless taverns and watering holes on Fleet Street. One of the most well regarded of those taverns is the Brazen Hydra. Uh, the Brazen Hydra, perhaps the most famous or maybe infamous uh, tavern in Fleet Street, uh, is a popular destination for sailors, gamblers, and mercenaries alike. Uh, built inside the upturned hull of a former slaughter, slaughter fleet ship, an intricate carved figurehead of many of a many serpented figure towers over the tower tavern entrance. Tavern itself spans three stories. Bar and kitchen occupy the ground floor, while card games and pool tables fill the second. And the top consists mostly of smaller private rooms for rent and sleep. Uh, though a few patrons visit the establishment during the day, the Brazen Hydra uh, is well known to be bustling as the sun sets and people come in from the slaughter docks. So, those of you that have been in Bilgewater for a, a while now, that is, Ibrak, commonly noted Scrapper, Hunter, and Shippan for Hire, uh, and another foreign wash ashore, Basilio, a recent addition to the endless reams of ship hands like Ibrak, <laughs> you two are both sitting at a round table with Swar Two Feet, another shipper. Swar is a Ooh. more aspiring and gregarious sort of bilge rat uh, who tries to go ab above and beyond for his clients, is a, is a way of saying it. Uh, he's often the first one to volunteer to find some extra hands for a crew or try and get some other people roped in on any sort of antics that might involve money. Uh, this is precisely how he got you a job or two, Basilio, and how you actually came to meet Ibarak just on this last job. Hmm. And uh, additionally, it's how he got the last member of the table to join you here. This is the Yordal sharpshooter, Yarno. <laughs> Uh, the three hey. of you, the three of you upon Yarno. Swar, Swar <laughs> <laughs> Yarno, uh, the three of you upon Swar's urging, uh, just got off a shipping job that paid shockingly well. Uh, it was an odd job, and how simple it was. Some well-paying bilgewater captain paid each of you seventy-five coins to act as general crew and possibly muscle for a pickup just outside of port. You sailed out, met a ship from the Freljord, and a large box was unloaded from uh, the other ship and on to yours. The captain himself seemed very nervous the entire time, but nothing seemed to be out of the ordinary in the slightest. The box was just brought over, you and the rest of the crew put it below deck, and that was it. You were back to port before midday. Uh, all three of you roll a charisma check. Oh, man. Ooh, Start okay. us off strong. Okay. All right. Ooh, I got a dirty 20, baby. Okay. I have a 12. Okay. I rolled a 4. Okay. Um, Shark Man smile big. Uh, uh, Basilio, hey, go ahead. you know my character better than I do. <laughs> uh, Basilio, go ahead and add that 75 gold to your uh, your character sheet, or however you're keeping okay. track of stuff. Uh, Ibrak and Yarno, add, add just 70, because... Uh, Wow. Swar, Swar cajoles the two of you into uh, assisting him in paying for a round of drinks to go to the remaining members of the crew who are scattered throughout the uh, Brazen Hydra. Basilio uh, agrees at first, uh, but then actually swindles his money away without uh, the <laughs> quite drunken Swar noticing. Woo! Uh, also in the My bar, we have uh, Akram uh, Nagabrios. Uh, he is currently talking with the owner of the Hydra, Horvan Beck. Uh, he's a well, pretty well-known uh, Buddha sympathizer, and uh, he was having a chat with you. Uh, Dave, would you like to tell me what you're having a conversation with, or do you like a little more information about Mr. Beck? I would like a little more information first. Uh, Horvin Beck is a uh, former uh, berserker and pirate. He runs the Brazen Hydra. Uh, he allegedly owns it, but no one's actually quite sure if that's the case or not. Uh, after an encounter with a legendary sea monster left him unable to walk, Horvin personally carved himself leg braces from the bones of the monster and dragged the remains of his ship to, sh to shore and built the best pub Bilgewater has ever seen. So the stories go. Uh, many, many, disregard, metal many disregard his... <laughs> yeah, it's fucking radical. Many disregard his tale as an old sailor's legend, but the jagged ivory sheen of his leg braces and the festering bite mark on the tavern's outside suggest otherwise and the story to be true. Other than his obvious leg modifications, he's a rather unassuming man with a, a small and kind of kindly old gentleman face. Uh, and when he's behind the bar in obstructed view, you might think him to be a bit milk toast for Bilgewater. But he's well respected in the city, and as soon as he stands up, everyone realizes, oh shit, that's one tough motherfucker. <laughs> uh, Dave, if you, if you, what are you talking about with him? If not, I have some some templates for you here. Um, 
I would like to hear stories of the monster that he fucking killed and carved its bones into his own legs. That sounds amazing. <laughs> yes, please. It's pretty rad. <laughs> Uh, so as, as a brewer sympathizer, he is uh, not the biggest fan typically of the slaughtering of monsters and bringing them into town uh, for their meat and bone, which mm-hmm. is then sold, sold to offlanders for uh, money, various goods and the like. Uh, but uh, he does in he does tell his story with a bit of a uh, bit of a bit of unhappiness as uh, it's clear that he wasn't necessarily out with the intention of, of slaying a vile sea monster, especially one that is most likely an individual and will not have, you know, kin. Uh, thus d- removing an animal from existence forever that will not be another one seen of it. Um, but uh, he's more than happy to note that uh, it did sort of change his life into what he is now, which is, you know, a well-to-do tavern man without much of a problem outside the occasional bar fight to deal with. I'd like to ask him a question. Yeah, sure. <clears throat> did you pay your tithe and or not? And is that why the monster attacked you? Where's my, where's my voice for Herman back? Hang on. I, I, uh, I paid my tithe. I paid it with, uh, this leg, and then, uh, then with that leg right there, uh, right after. It was, uh, it was, it was a double tithe. Uh, for those of you that are uh, familiar with Bilgewater, uh, background, probably know the tithe is, but the rest of you, a tithe is, uh, sailors commonly keep a coin or something of high value on them to offer to the sea upon leaving Bilgewater. Uh, you're supposed to do this either at a temple or toss into the water as you leave the, uh, uh, port itself the captain is supposed to make a large tithe for the crew but they often don't because they're stingy mofos so uh crewmen will keep a small coin on their person just in case if they see rough water or some such they'll toss one over as a uh offering to nagakaboros to not you know sink their ship uh lastly at the bar is deltrum of the iceborn uh currently staying at at the hydra and very much eating into the small amount of savings that he has uh deltrum you are eating at the bar and having a drink uh, more or less overhearing the conversation between the barkeep and this large uh, brew. Actually, I shouldn't say large. Uh, what does Akram look like? Oh, you know, probably should have written down my physical thing. <laughs> <laughs> he, looks like a, he looks like a big dumb idiot is what he looks like. <laughs> uh, most brew clerics kind of look very similar. So I'm, I'm in my mid-20s, so I look relatively young. My armor... I, I guess my we'll start with my height. My height is... A little above average, but not freakish. Um, so probably like six foot, a little lower. Uh, and then relatively bulky. Uh, definitely not... Uh, def- like something you'd expect from like a seasoned sailor, someone who's been on this, the seas and is constantly doing work. Mm-hmm. Um, Armor-wise, mostly chainmail on the bottom, but or... Uh, what's the word for that? Rope? has like a bunch of ornate um, like carved bone uh mm-hmm. pieces on the outside kind of ornamenting the whole thing um with a shield on my back uh actually Delta, i'm gonna ask you the same what do you look like friend uh i'm a i'm a i'm a decent sized dude right i'm not the biggest guy because right. <laughs> uh i'm not a warrior i am just uh you know my mage but i come i am iceborne so we come we're sturdy people right the Freljord were sturdy people to survive in that kind of harsh climate, that environment. Right, yeah. uh, I'm wearing like, I'm not wear. I, normally, I have on you know a bunch of warm weather gear, uh, cold weather gear, but I'm kind of slightly disrobed. I, I got like a little bag I could hold my stuff in, or maybe I just have like my furs just fucking folded up into a backpack or something. Uh, I don't know. How, I, how are I, you? Uh, how are you? How are you accommodating to the uh, sweltering heat and humidity of Bilgewater, by the way? As a as a man from the cold, yeah, I'm not I'm not like a fan of the cold, so I'm not a fan of the warm either. I'm mm. just kind of like permanently uncomfortable <laughs> all the time, you know. But you get you, you're used to it at this point, so you're this, just like whatever. So the okay. the Freljordian man loudly sweating at the bar. <laughs> it's just like I don't need a refill. I'll just put my head over the cup. And... <laughs> Awful. Right. Um. So yeah, you're eating at the bar and having a drink, uh, mildly listening to the. Uh, kind of loud story of the tavern keeper he simultaneously is being loud about it but doesn't want people to be listening because he's not fully proud of it he's a strange man um and uh, people are commonly giving you looks not because of any distaste towards freljordians uh the opposite actually uh it is assumed that because you're a freljordian uh you have money oh oh 
as <laughs> it's common uh, for all your business business people t- uh, to come around here and throw their money around, as it were. Uh, mm. Um, what is the conversation going on at the table with uh, Basilio, Ibrak, and Yarno? Dude, I'm gonna be fucking bragging about how much money we just made. That's his first step for Yarno in uh, paving his way to glory. I'm uh, bragging about my past exploits. No one else wants to talk. I would say Basilio is taking in the conversation. He is not uh, keen to let on too much about himself personally. And uh, Ibrak, uh, so you and Swar, I wouldn't say you go way back, but you're you're very familiar with each other, and he's a common uh, per- com- companion to see on a ship. Um, right. So you, you've shared your fair amount of drinks with him, and you've heard most of his bullshit stories. <laughs> if that helps you at all. All right. Mm. All right, so I'll assume that Yarno and Swar are the ones uh, mostly leading yeah. the conversation, talking about I their, so. their uh, how much money they have. <laughs> They're those yeah, guys. There's those guys you knew in uh, in high school I, that bragged about how much money they made at one of the I, shitty I, high school jobs. I, 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 I have a trinket store if anybody's interested. Uh, Zon, uh, right over there. It's hard to miss. Mm. Uh, sorry, I need mm. the canonical name of Yarno's trinket store. Uh, Yinkets trinkets. <laughs> wow, Ooh. I hate you. <laughs> Uh, well, so we know where I, Deltrim's not shopping, goddamn. Swar uh, leaning over his cup goes, "Oh, right, really? It's um, it's very uh, it's very interesting there. I'll uh, if I'm ever uh, in in the vicinity, I'll have to stop by and uh, uh, examine your uh, uh, your trinkets there." And yes, well, he talks I, like that all the time. I would mention that the only reason to go to Zon ever uh, is for not wanting to go to Zon. So you gotta go go to the trinket store because that's the most fun thing to do. So sorry, is that in character voice? No, it wasn't. My bad. <laughs> That's funny. I'm not uh, ready yet. Here's a uh, rough, uh, rough appropriation of what uh, Basilia looks like, according to Zach. He doesn't have a helmet on, and he does have white hair. So of course he has uh, white hair. Yeah. All right. Well, well, I mean, that's what half. half that is true. Yeah, it's Shelly. Or no, not white hair. It's a. It's a something. It's a void. You have horn, a beard, right? Kaiser. Um, no. He's clean shaven. Mm. Okay. Um, go ahead and give us Yarno's description. Uh, so he's got. Oh god, this is gonna be so funny, so dumb. Uh, Hextech goggles like right here, like little mm-hmm. tints on them. Uh, basically a, a fedora with the ears popping through, oh, a little bit, no. one a little flappy. Oh, no. <laughs> of course he has a fedora. Uh, I've got a leather uh, jacket that was custom made. Uh, I don't know if it's uh, going to be, uh, if it's because it's, um, what is it called when you have, uh, what's it when the order was Bespoke? The, no, they have um, glimmers or like the stuff that like manipulates what they look like. Mm. Glamour. 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 Yeah, glamour. Uh, so I have a leather jacket, a utility belt with a, you can see like a little whip and some pickaxes, Hextech or like a gun right there. It's got a bunch of materials and a little knapsack that's almost bigger than I am because I'm only two foot two. So... <laughs> Yordles are comedically two small. foot two. They're like, yeah, it's, Yordles it's ridiculous. Are small shit. I'm two foot two. Yeah, I like, guess that makes sense. Like Poppy Damn. is like a a tall Yordle. Yeah, chakrams are short, short shorts to me, and chakrams are like normally like little like things. Yeah. So. Wow. And yeah, uh, Ibrak is a big fucking shark man. Yeah. <laughs> no, if you have if you, if you have anything, please go ahead. Yeah. No. Um, Ibrak is a very large uh person. He's about six four ish. Um, quite the tall fellow. Mm. Um, again, well muscled, a seasoned, a seasoned sailor, and also naturally quite strong due to his Vestayan roots. Um, again, like most Vestayans, even humanoid Vestayans, they can hide their animalistic traits if they desire. I tend not to, so I have <laughs> essentially thin-like protrusions around my elbows and around my lower legs. Um, my skin is has a slightly bluish tint to it, looking a little aquatic, but again, otherwise mostly human looking. It's wild. If people see a gigantic shark man, they don't want to fuck with him typically. Yes. Do, also, do you have, do you also, have hair? Uh, yes, I do. It grows very slowly. I've actually never had to cut it in my life, um, but it is at this point after 300 years gotten a little long and shaggy, um, but <laughs> it, I don't have any body hair or anything. Um, also around my neck, I actually do have a large uh, necklace with a tooth on the end of it, 
um, that is very important to me, and I do not leave anywhere without it. Um, oh, damn, is I was, it kind of make a it, joke about it? Does it look like it's worth money? <laughs> no, it looks like a piece of animal bone. Okay, then I don't. Wait, no, no, Yarno, roll an investigation check. <laughs> okay. <laughs> do I get? All right, I got a ten. All right, you 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 would suspect that it's not worth anything yeah. other than sentimental value. Okay. All right, so the other patrons are currently uh, in the Brazen Hydra with you guys. Uh, there's, uh, of course, uh, many crewmen and uh, captains and such that are either didn't go out today for whatever reason or got back early like you did, including the same members of the crew that Basilio, Ibrak, and Yarno were a part of today. Mm. Um, and uh, given the popularity of the Brazen Hydra, there's no shortage of interesting faces to be found around the tavern. Uh, but currently, two of the largest, uh, loudest patrons currently occupying the tavern are Scrapper uh, Tulla Kenton and the well-known pickpocket and pirate da uh, Dane Pierpont. Ooh, I like that name. Uh, and and yeah, those uh, are well-known for people who are from this city, uh, right? So we'll get to that. Okay, sorry. Um, okay. So actually, bo no, both of, the, both of them would be known to... to uh, Basilio, Ibrak, and uh, Akram. Yarno, you obviously wouldn't know because you're new, and Deltrum, you don't know anyone. Hey. <laughs> uh, but Basilio, even in your small amount of time here, you are familiar with the existence of these two. They seem to be okay. here every fucking day. <laughs> uh, a tall woman with uh, wild dark hair and a flair for the dramatic Tala uh, is known around Bilgewater for her penchant for tall tales. She's also secretly in league with Gangplank. Um, Pridge and Dave, you are aware of this. Uh... The former Reaver King believed to be deceased. Well, it is now somewhat common knowledge that he is alive. Uh, her mother <laughs> serves as one of the priests at the main temple of Nagakaburos, uh, and she has uh, more legend, more knowledge about the strange legends uh, that surround Bilgewater than the average person. Uh, Akram, you're aware that while her mother is one of the Baru uh, priestesses at the temple, uh, Tala herself is not a believer in Nagakaburos, at least not... Uh, she's not one to hang around the temple. If she has her belief, she keeps them mostly okay. to herself, as it were. Okay, but she's Baru. She's of Baru descent. She's not. She's not pure Baru, though. She's not like her. I, I from how I understand it, her father is not Baru. Mm -hmm. uh, Dane Pierpont okay. uh, is the other uh, person. Uh, he mm -hmm. has heard his uh, fair share of tall stories, um, and uh, he let's just say doesn't that doesn't get along with her. Uh, he has a very shiny bald head and thick silver mutton chops. Uh, they're easily recognizable to anyone that frequents the Brazen Hydra, and easily recognizable by his loud voice that is almost always yelling something at someone. Uh, he's not well liked outside of his usual drinking buddies, uh, but he knows quite a few captains with good ships, and he apparently has connections in the high up Eries, or if he's to be believed. Uh, people tend to just kind of ignore his bullshit and heckling and just let him do his own thing with his annoying drinking buddies. Uh, these two are currently locked in a heated argument, and they're both notably drunk. Uh, you are all sitting at your respective seats, surrounded by the sound of raucous laughter and hearty swigs of Bilgewater's finest rum. Uh, <laughs> in the corner, a, the woman with flamboyant purple coat, that's Tala, uh, kicks her feet up onto the table and says, And so there we was, she says, eyes solemn, me and me crew, digging through a wreck, you know, as we do. When suddenly, whoosh, and she... Sweeps her arm across the table with her drink in hand, almost knocking pretty much everything on the table over. Hey. They haul that big lug of scrap into the harbor, and everything goes cold. Something dark swooped over the horizon. I never felt something so terrifying and so cold in my life. I tell you, that ship haunted. I say, we never should have pulled the wreck from the tides, and I'll be the bearded lady herself if I think we should have let them drag it into harbor. Dane. Uh, who's sitting one table away in uh, his dark clothes and his big dumb uh, button chops, uh, pulls his pipe from his lips, uh, lets out sort of like a growl, and hollers over. Ah, come on, Tala. We both know better than to believe your tall tales now. To exchange several words, most of them unpleasant, uh, and after some, after some things we can't say on any streaming platform, uh, Dane boots the end <laughs> of uh, Tala's table and uh, spills her drink all over her big dumb purple coat. Uh, they both stand up and get in, get into one another's face. Uh, it's worth note that uh, after a moment, Dane's three friends also get up. Uh, they're more or less surrounding <laughs> Tala in like a not like a almost like a like a wide V. Um, but uh, Tala, drunk, crazy, 
Fearless, or all three of them, uh, actually strikes first. Uh, she splashes the remains of her drinks onto one of uh, D- Dane's goons' face, and uh, a sudden shout arises above the crowd. I'll show ye what happens if you don't believe this scrapper's tales. Uh, Knuckles crack against bone, and the same squat man in dark clothing is knocked flat as Tulla crashes his fist into his face and then gives him a boot to the jaw for good measure. Uh, one of the one of Dane's drinking buddies uh, help him from the ground while the other lunges for the woman. Uh, someone in the bar raises a tankard and cheer, and a, a rowdy crowd begins to urge on the fight. What do you do? Wait, wait, um, just, 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 just make sure I got this straight. Uh, I, I think you said uh, she punches his fist into his face. Does she grab his hand and punch himself? No, 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 no. Uh, Tala, oh, Tala crashes her fist into his face. I might, I might have misspoke. Oh. I, I wanted her to like, you know, why you stop, stop hitting yourself? Stop hitting yourself. <laughs> that would have been. That, then I would have instantly been on her side. That would have been now, absolutely. Now I'm peak. conflicted. So it's just a, it's just a bar fight, right? It's just a bar fight. But it's, a, it's like a what a four v one right it now. It is a four v one. Yes. <laughs> uh, I'm, I would actually just watch for a little bit. Not right. gonna lie, I'm entertained by this. Humans, entertaining creatures. Let me tell you. Um, I mean, it, my my character wouldn't want to get involved. I know it's not super interesting podcast material, though. So, <laughs> hmm. I, I, you know what? I I could yep. see my character want to try and calm down the fights. Uh, well, so while Basilio debates calming down the fight, is anyone actively doing something? <laughs> Yes. <laughs> I have a nine in strength, so I don't. Um, I'm gonna I, kill, I would kill uh, somebody if I could say. I stand up, take a step towards the action, to, yeah, towards the scuffle, um, laughing and bellowing out. Um, 4v1 doesn't seem like a fair fight. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I yeah. love that it's a big pirate voice. Shark, I love dude. that it's a big pirate voice. Okay, uh, is shark, anyone? Shark, uh, Basilio, is are you joining him by any chance on this? Yeah, yeah. I, I'm gonna come in and try and uh, intimidate them all into uh, halting. Uh, Ac- <laughs> Ac- Akram or Deltram, are either you doing anything at this point? I'm gonna actually observe the barkeep whose name I already forget Horvin. and see Horvin what he Beck. does. Yes. Uh, yes. Beck has seen a million bar fights. Uh, at this point, this is nothing that he cares about. And then I also don't care, but I'm keeping an eye on it. Is there... <laughs> Can I see, like, if anything's fallen or if, like, there's any... Like, if they've dropped any goodies or anything like that? Uh, after she splashed the drink in his face, she did drop the tanker. Okay. Then I'll, I'm still... <laughs> I'm, I'm sipping and just... You're sweating over there. I... <gasps> He's got 30 layers on in the middle of it. Okay, um, uh, Ibrax, since you uh, wandered up to the four goons first, I'm going to give you uh, an intimidation roll with advantage because you have Basilio oh, backing you up. Oh, baby. Mm-hmm. All right. He better get advantage. He's a fucking shark, man. Holy shit. <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead and roll a d20 for me. Uh, I rolled a 16 on that. Uh, does that actually beat this guy? That's with your modifiers, too? Uh, well, my cursor modifier is zero, but I do have proficiency and in intimidation. Oh, so you had two. You had two with it, or oh, two. Oh, and it's eighteen. There's nice. no way. That's solid. Yeah, if you have proficiency, add that, add, add that plus two every time on my dude. Yeah. All right. So, um, Dane, uh, Dane's goons kind of like freeze a little bit, realizing that this fight has actually attracted more attention than they intended. They basically intended, you know, to just jump this lady. <laughs> Uh, it's another drunken bar fight in Bilgewater. It happens all the fucking time. What's the big deal? Um, mm. But uh, at, at the sort of uh, rise of you two, Dane uh, gets to his feet or is helped to his feet by one of his friends and uh, sort of turns to you, Ebrack, and just goes, You got a problem, shark face? Hoo-ha. Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> My friend doesn't Ooh. like you. I don't <laughs> like you. <laughs> He'll be dead. <laughs> Where well, if there... Well, if there's a fight, I wanted to be invited. That's all. Uh, one of uh, Dane's friends, uh, Dane's goons, goes, "Oh, fair enough," and uh, hits you over the back with a chair. Basilio, oh <laughs> and a brack roll, roll initiative. Oh hell yeah! Okay, we're in this. Uh, uh, Yarno, you, the- you you spent the day with these two goons. Are you assisting in any way? Yeah, I mean, I'm gonna. I'll, we'll see how much I get involved, but I will roll. All right, Swar we'll also gets up to assist you too. Okay. Um, uh, I rolled an eleven. Uh, what are I? They're, they're my homies for now. They're all I know in the city. Yeah. Is is it is initiative just a d twenty plus your dex modifier? Okay. Yes. Unless you're higher. 
Oh, let me roll for Dana's goons. Uh, Yarno, are you I, are you actively like up at this point, or are you? No, nah, I'm just at the fucking table. Okay, cool. I got a 19. So, um, Dane goes first, and uh, he uh, draws his pi his uh, pistol from his hip and shoots at Ebrock. Wait, he's shooting Ebra? Okay, dude, hold on a second. Whoa, this guy went from bar fight to bar kill. Get him out of here. <laughs> uh, it's it's of note that killing in a instigated fight isn't technically illegal in Bilgewater. Yeah, I don't know how it is mm. in this town. Mm. Uh, I also should note that just in Bilgewater in general, life is not treated very highly and people okay. die a lot. Okay. Mm. I'm just, I'm new here, so this is intriguing. Um, sorry, give me one second. Okay. Uh, so, he's rolling this. What does a, oh, that's gonna fucking beat your guy to MAC. Does an 18 beat AC? Uh, yeah, I mean, my is 15. Yeah. All right, so you take not much damage, probably. Uh, you take three damage. All right. Sort of glances off your shoulder, and uh, your natural shark skin, and, of course, uh, barbarian nature, uh, makes it a little little not too terrible. Uh, so mm -hmm. as soon as he fires, uh, he steps back sort of into the table that was just, uh, sorry, into the space that was occupied by the chair next to that table, and lets uh, the very same goon that hit you with the chair sort of step in front of him a little bit, just kind of slide on in there. Oh, I know what kind of guy this is. <laughs> this is my kind of guy. <laughs> uh, and then uh, Swar goes next, uh, and Swar, uh, come, coming up behind Ebrak, uh, just goes, oh, oh, this uh, fucking guy, I'm gonna fucking, I'm gonna get I'm gonna fucking get this motherfucker for ya. Uh, he pulls a knife from his side and whips it at uh, Dane, sort of sliding it over the shoulder and around uh, the goon in front of him. And let's see, this is... He has to hit a pretty big number to hit that. He fucking whiffs like a motherfucker. It flies straight past him and wedges into a bar pillar behind him. And then Swarge kind of goes, I, uh, that was just a fucking uh, false sense of security for the guy. I'm, uh, uh, yeah, I'm just gonna... And then he also takes a step back. <laughs> Swar's a fucking punk ass bitch. Basilio, go ahead. You have the three goons that are sort of <laughs> in a line between you and Dane, and then Tala is to your left. Radical. Okay, uh, hmm. I am not gonna break out. I'm, I'm not gonna reach my ultimate power level just yet. You know, I don't wanna, I don't wanna freak these people out. Uh, I'm gonna come up and, um, so we, we, we got, we got, these three goons in front of me, essentially? Yeah. Okay, uh, I'm gonna come up to one of them, and because this is a bar fight, Basilio's not afraid to fight a little dirty, and I'm gonna do a fainting attack. Okay, uh, go ahead and give us the give us the, the guts on that. Basically, uh, being a mix, like my, my, my special class, I have some superiority die, which will allow me to do some bonus action on my turns. Uh, I'm going to use my attack to do like a faint attack, and I'm gonna choose one of them as a target, I have advantage on my next attack roll uh, before the end of my turn, and if that attack hits, I can add the superiority die, which is a d8 to the attack's damage roll. Okay. All right, so... So you have Goon near Satala on the left, Goon in the middle, and then Goon covering Dane. Uh, I'm going to go Goon covering Dane. Okay. Uh, so he, roll he, with He attacks my boy. All right, D Dane's, Dane's boys are the one who attacked... Uh, Ebrak, yeah. Ebrak, right? Uh, yeah, yeah. They haven't yeah. attacked. Yeah, they attacked. Yeah, Ebrak didn't attack yet, man. You're, you're, you're yeah, no, 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 but, but, but uh, who, who shot Ebrak? Dane. 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 Oh, okay, I'm gonna attack one of Dane's goons then. Yeah, for sure. All right, my attack roll is. Who? That is a seven. Nope. Uh, you have advantage, though, right? Do you say? Uh, I do. So you're right. Roll that boy again. Ooh, now we got a 23. Okay, okay the 23 <laughs> hits. I know this is gonna be <laughs> shocking to you. Um, so which which one are you attacking? Uh, whatever Dane's goon is. So no, no there's there's he, there's three. They're all his goons. There's one oh. next to Tala, who is like, like you said the one blocking him. I think one the one blocking him. Yeah. Okay, then I'll, I'll attack the one blocking. All right, roll damage. Uh, all right, that is a d8. Oh my Christ! I rolled a nat one. I won on that, so uh, it's eight plus three, so I get four, and I also get another d8 for my superiority die. That's five. So a total of. Uh, what? Nine damage? Okay. Okay, yeah. so you, you, uh, I'm gonna split this up a little bit because you got the one and the, and the thing. So you, you, mm -hmm. you go for the feint and you kind of like get him a little, a little, sl a little slash. And he's oh, like, wow. what the fuck was that? And then you fucking just slice him across. Chest. He goes, oh, motherfucker. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Admitted that. Um, but unfortunately, uh, his turn is next. 
Oh. And uh, <laughs> he... What the fuck? What kind of person is he? Okay. Um, he's going to use headbutt. <laughs> okay. Oh, okay. Uh, so he has a, they, a bunch of the pirates and just have very odd special moves. Um, roll a constitution saving throw for me. Oh, this is going to be awesome. I love Ooh, this already. Okay. Oh, wow. 16. You got a 60. You lost by one. Fuck. No. <laughs> um, okay. You are going to take damage. But don't worry. So is he. Uh. Oh my god, this is great. <laughs> hey, I Zach, love this uh, already. Zach, take eight damage. Okay. Ooh. And uh, you will start one turn, what, sorry, one later in the turn order next turn. Okay, that's cool. Because um, cool. you are slowed. Uh, this gentleman also takes four damage. Hey, you don't need to know how much damage he takes. This guy takes damage, don't worry about it. Um, and okay. uh, he will also start later in the round next order. Interesting, interesting. Uh, next, is the, next is the guy in the middle. Did, I, did they really roll like that? They really did. Okay, wow. Uh, next is the guy in the middle who uh, draws his uh, cutlass and uh, takes a swipe at... Controls for the fuck of it. Actually, takes a swipe at Tala, who's on the ground. What a dick. Wow. Uh, and he... Uh, he has advantage because she's on the ground. Nope. He does fucking suck. He, he, he misses a person on the ground. Uh, no, I'll say that uh, he goes to stab her and actually catches the side of her coat instead of it actually catching her, and it just sort of and like that... plunks through into the wooden plank beneath the beneath him. Her cool purple coat is just taking all the brunt. I and fucking know, um, right? I wish I had saved the image of her, which I think very is her. sad about it. Um, the last goon is next, and uh, he draws an axe from uh, his side, sort of like a oh, uh, twin sided axe, not not like a hatchet, but like an actual like fighting axe, uh, and he is going to hack at. Ebrek. Okay, uh, does a 14 beat AC? Uh, no, I have a 15. Okay, uh, he swings it into your fucking big shark arm, and the shark skin just, like, it just bounces right the fuck off. <laughs> he has the immediate look of, ah, shit. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Tala is next. She, uh, gets herself up, uh, from her, uh, like, knocked down state, and, uh, jumps across the table, it's a big round, like, wheel table, uh, onto Dane, tackling him to the floor. I'm gonna roll this. Uh, no, JK, he sidesteps it, and she just flies across and just planks. That's my kind of bar fight here. <laughs> He's so drunk. <laughs> uh, Yarno, after, after the shot, are you fully engaged in this fight? I'm gonna be engaged. All right, you I'm can't gonna... start drawing weapons on the only people I know in town. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm putting... Screwed. Then you're gonna go now. All right, I... Oh, okay, is... is... Somebody has shot a gun, right? Dane yes, shot Dane a gun. shot a gun. And and when he shot the gun, the bar went quiet for approximately like two seconds before maybe more people started just cheering the fight on more. All right. And, and um, Horvin Beck didn't fucking blink. Okay. Uh, Everybody checked to see if they got shot. They're like, oh, not me. Yeah, okay, like, everyone, everyone like checked their, their, their pistol or effective firearm. And they're like, oh, it wasn't me. We're good. We're good. We're good. <laughs> um, so, oh, God, this is going to be interesting. Um. Are all the goons kind of like similar looking besides Dane? Like uh, they actually like... do have descriptions, or I, I wrote descriptions for them. Uh, so the gentleman with the cutlass has a tall cut mohawk and Baru tattoos, but he's not Baru himself. Uh, the guy on the far left who with the axe uh, is clearly not a not a Bilgewater native. You would suspect he's Noxian. Um, okay. And the other guy is a generic ass generic pirate. He even has a hat and uh, a peg leg. This, this, is this the guy who headbutted me? This is the guy who headbutted you and hit and hit, and hit e Brack with a chair. Fuck this yeah. shit, man. <laughs> he is, he is uh, what I would describe as a big motherfucker. I'm gonna... Oh, God. Uh, what a I'm gonna do is... Big dude. Jump off the table. Okay. Like this. I'm gonna bonus action hide amongst, like, Basil and, like, like the, the, the people in the crowd a little bit right here. Uh -huh. Like, kind of, like, weave in. Because I'm, A, I'm a halfling, so I should be fine. I'll roll for it if you need me to bonus action hide. Uh, but... what, what, do you, what do you want? Keep, keep telling me a story, and then I'll see what so you want So, basically, do. I'm, like, getting in between these people here. I'm gonna take out one of my chakrams and then stab one of the guys in the feet. Okay, get give me give me a dex check. This guy's okay. two foot tall. You mean to tell me he can't hide among a crowd? Uh, I've got a, a dex check. Yeah. Yeah, I got a 17. Okay, yeah, that'll pass. I was gonna say, if you if you tried to, like, hide amongst the crowd otherwise, people who are rousing on the fight would push you, sort of like, you know, ring up people, yeah, push you back into the fight. Through. But yeah, you're, you're small fair, enough fair. and slippery enough as a yordle to uh, move through the crowd. And then uh, go ahead and give me uh, your attack roll. Do I uh, get 
uh, sneak attack. Do you have? Am I, do I, am I you, you have sneak hidden? attack, right? Yeah, I would say you're, considering that you didn't also you didn't join the fight initially. You're joining it sort okay. of after the fact. They were already accepting the fact this is who I'm fighting. Also, he's a bit dazed. I, he just headbutted a motherfucker. Yeah. Also, uh, he's surrounded by my boys, or at yes. least near him, so I should be fine. Uh, does a does a 23 hit? Obviously. Yeah. Yeah. 23 fucking hits. <laughs> Jesus uh, I'm Christ. doing. I'm dropping. I'm dropping. Uh, hard numbers out here. A lot of numbers on this guy. And uh, you're, uh, you're attacking peg leg, 14 right? 14 damage with a shock over the foot. Just... You're attacking peg leg. Uh, I'm attacking the guy who headbutted. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Wait. So yeah. you're hitting him in his good foot. Okay. Uh, 14 yeah. damage, you say? <laughs> yeah. Okay. Uh, he is severely bloodied. Um, <laughs> went from a stab to the foot. Look, man. Um, yeah. He, you, you get him in the foot, and he, uh, he, t he tumbles for like head first into the table. And banks it off and knocks the whole table over, and it's now like sort of uprighted. Okay. And uh, he's just kind of now laying prone, kind of clutching the side of his head and his leg. He's uh, not I'm dead, I'm, but he's thoroughly incapacitated. I'm gonna bonus action hide behind Basilo's boot, just like this. Like, hey. <laughs> <laughs> okay, hold on. <laughs> After, you know what? Fuck it. Sure. He makes such a big scene with knocking over the table and all that shit that you sort of hide in, in the. In For the, the bonus action hide, I, I got a. Uh... I got a 13 for stealth. It's not great, but... Uh, I'll, I'll give it to you. This fight's getting hey. weird. All right, um, and we are back at the top of the order uh, with... Actually, well, hold on. I should ask. Deltram and uh, Akram, just watching still. Do I not get to go? Does you, it seem like oh, people you're sorry. are... I'm sorry. I totally skipped the oh, bridge. Okay. Go ahead. You're at the bottom of the order. I thought uh, you already went. <laughs> go ahead. Sure. No. Um, all right, so I thought this was a bar fight. We were just gonna be throwing fists, but someone tried to shoot me. Yes. Uh, <laughs> a, as as a as a, as a as a Bilgewater native, that is par for the course for Bilgewater bar fights. <laughs> yeah, but man, you damn fists. There there is fight. a there is a term called uh what is it called? I think it's called a wharf cry, which is just the term for uh the na the natural sounds of Bilgewater that includes gunshots that you just kind of just kind of drown them out. So I, uh, so I thought this was going to be a fist fight, but someone tried to shoot me, so I pull out my hand axe, uh, and I'm going to attack who's ever closest to me. I think I'm going to assume it's the guy who tried to axe me. Uh, actually, it's going to be the guy with the cutlass in the middle. Really? What happened to the guy who... Oh, you know what? To... They switched they switch positions, so yes, it'll be hand axe guy. Uh, alright, so I'm going to attack him because I'm salty. Fair. You're, 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 you're a sea creature. Uh, sea go sea ahead creature. and roll that attack for me. <laughs> I appreciated it. Thanks, bud. So uh, I roll a 15. Ties go to the attacker. Yes. I goes to the runner. Yeah, tie goes to the runner. Okay, so you hit a uh, damage roll. All right. Um, so I think it says a hand axe is a 1d6. Plus your strength. Plus your yeah. strength. Plus strength, yes. Okay. For damage, at least. You don't, do, you don't add your proficiency to damage. Wait, but this is damage, so... So yeah. it'd be one d six plus your strength modifier. Plus, sorry, one D6 I think plus. it's plus four since you have you have eighteen strength. Uh, Seventeen. Uh, so I do five plus damage. Three. Yeah. Okay, you deal five damage. Uh, so you ca you sort of catch this guy in like the upper thigh with the axe, kind of like on a downward strike, and he's notably pissed about it, but he still seems relatively fine, and he sort of like rustles his arm, your arm away, and like kind of gets back a little bit to get the axe out of his fucking thigh. Uh, and that, now that I didn't skip you, Brack, uh, is going to be turn order. Uh, so Dane is up next, and uh, he sort of uh, has, he sidestepped uh, Tala, and uh, he aims his uh, pistol at the side of her head as she's on the ground. Oh my and, god. Uh, mutters something, something, buru does he, whore. Does he hold it sideways? No. <laughs> it's a fucking footlock pistol. Oh my god. Uh, you literally can't with those. And at that. Yeah, Dane catches a crossbow bolt to the back, Dane. and uh, okay. Ak Akram roll a perception check. Okay, one sec. Actually, Deltrum do the same. I think, uh, yeah, I'm proficient sure at that. So that's... <laughs> I'll play a D&D, look at me go! <laughs> dude, Hyo in this fight would kill uh, everybody. Nat fucking 20, dude. Okay. I also... <laughs> I also got a nut 20. Okay, Whoa. Uh, both of you with your keen eyes see that in a flash of, like, 
in dis disgusting speed. Uh, Hordenbeck pulls a small uh, one-handed crossbow from underneath the counter, and in a without even aiming the fucking thing, just like knows exactly where to go, shoots a small crossbow bolt across the bar that catches uh, Dane in the back shoulder of the hand he's holding the gun with. Okay. Uh, and he he dr drops the gun and sort of goes ah fuck, uh, and uh, Beck sort of like. He rises up, and uh, at this point, you realize this motherfucker is near seven feet tall. Oh my god! With his Dang. with his <laughs> with his gigantic prosthetic uh, ivory legs, and uh, the it takes sort of the rest of the bar a moment to realize that he's the one who actually shot the thing, because he did it so quick and like so out of nowhere. Um, but uh, he's like, all right, all right, that's enough, that's enough. Either take it outside or kill each other fast. I don't care which. Just stop in my fucking bar. And Dane, who surprisingly seems to be okay with having been shot in the fucking shoulder, uh, kind of like <laughs> rolls over to his thing and he goes, oh, Are you at least going to fucking take it out for me? And uh, Beck just goes, Yeah, no. <laughs> <laughs> this guy's dope. Uh, Dane's other two goons uh, go, to, uh, go and attend to him. They pull him back to his original table. They seem to have no problem, once again, with the fact that this uh, they were just shot by the uh, barkeep. Um, once again, uh, Ibrak and Akram, this is, this is a little uncommon, but still relatively in the normal means for what happens in a Bilgewater bar on a raucous night. Uh, Yarno, Basilio, Delstrom, this shit's wild. That's awesome, dude. <laughs> I'm all about it, dude. I just stabbed the guy in the foot. Um, I am confused. And, uh, Beck, Beck sits down and, uh, looks to you, Akram, and just goes, do you mind going and doing your priest business and making sure she's alive. Oh, one hurry. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Dane and, can bleed out for all I care. And Horvin Beck, man who knows everyone in town, goes, who? <laughs> um, he also looks over to you, Delta. Are you still, are you still watching this big motherfucker? I'm, 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 I, I take like a sip of my whatever I'm sipping on, and yeah, 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 yeah. I, I guess I'm still looking at him, maybe goes, kind of glancing in between him and the goes, fight. Just fuck are you looking at? <laughs> I, didn't, I just look down at my drink, you know, I just look down and just keep sipping. Alright, uh, so, uh, Akram, do you want to go check on Tala? Yeah, I'll check on her. I can so, just go ahead. So, as you walk <laughs> over, uh, Tala, noted psychopath, uh, sort of like rolls onto her back and just like kips up to her, to her feet and stands up like nothing happened at all. She uh she she writes the table, and uh, she gives um uh, fuck it. Hell yeah, she gives Yarno a big hug. <laughs> I'm surprised she can see me amongst the people. Ah! <laughs> she cradles him like a baby. Yeah, geez, so I have any say in this hug or no? Yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll give you, a, I'll give you, a, I'll give you like a. You want to do a dex check, to sort of like maneuver out of it, make it into like a Christian side hug. Oh, dude, I got that dex. I got a. I got a fucking 20, uh, 24. I'll make this a dex contest for funsies. Jesus Christ. Yeah, you beat her. Um, so yeah, you sort of like, you like kind of <laughs> get away and she gives you like a weird, awkward around the side, like kind of like a hug pat and then you sort of like slip away. Uh, she stands up and uh, offers to shake Ebrak and Basilio's hands. At the same time, she's doing like a cross hand gesture. She's a, once again, weird person. <laughs> Uh, Basilio is like rubbing his head from where he just got headbutt still and like doesn't real like it's like a natural thing to just like be kind and shake somebody's hand and he, he does it okay um, she uh, sort of claps her hands together and uh, looks at the, th the three of you and Swar uh, and goes alright th 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 thank you so much guys uh, how, how, how about I buy you a drink here here uh, uh, out a drink. Akram, you're sort of like walking over during this, and she's like pushing these four towards you, and you sort of get like swept in, and she goes, "Oh, you work with my uh, my mother there, don't you?" Uh, she's Irish now, apparently. I don't fucking know. <laughs> she's a weirdo. That's all. Yeah, she's a yeah. strange person. <laughs> Schizophrenic. One of her personalities yeah. is a pirate. The other is an Irish person. <laughs> she's an Irish part. That's a thing. <laughs> I do. Yeah. Oh, well, the more the merrier. Come grab a drink. <laughs> sort of brings you back over. Uh, and so now the uh, four of you are uh, over at the bar with Tala. She takes the seat next to Deltrum, and you sort of are all in a line now. You are consuming most of the bar with the, the five, uh, the, sorry, the six of you. Uh, <laughs> Suar is standing. 
and he sort of like half leans in the bar next to Tala, and he's kind of giving... for a seat, <laughs> but I'm on the fucking table, just kind of just going like this. That's I fair. finally have a chair. That's fair. He and, can't take my spot. And like... Su- and Suarez kind of giving her the hey ladies vibe, <laughs> the, hey, the hey mamas look. So he's choosing um, not to sit. Yes, oh, precisely. Is. Okay. Um, I'm I'm gonna say uh uh Suar, I I I think you left your knife in the wall over there. And he goes, "Hey, hey, man, don't, don't, don't worry. I got, I got plenty." <laughs> and he opens the, the the coat of his like pirate jacket, and it is riddled with knives, like an uncomfortable amount of knives, like <laughs> upwards of forty knives. Uh, Basilio mutters under his breath, "Jesus, God, I gotta get out of this fucking town." <laughs> Confirm, oh, Jesus, yeah. and then uh, Jesus is a known character in uh, Runeterra. Rune Jesus, <laughs> as I live and breathe. Uh, I will talk to Suar and just be like. She's not interested. You know this, Swar. Move along. Sit down. Take the drink and move on with your life. And he grumbles and takes a seat next to where Yarno is sitting on the bar. Not not grumbles so much as does a weird murmur. Sort of like... Yeah. 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 <laughs> he's, not, he's not that, but he's kind of that. Um, so she buys uh, all of you a drink, uh, including Deltrum, and it's not clear if she realizes that you weren't involved in that fight or not. <laughs> <laughs> do any of us recognize that, I just like, kinda, do we, I'm rolling with the punches I'm not we, really saying uh, like, Yarno you, you actually like do that. recognize him um, Deltrum that is uh, uh, just because you have seen him in this particular tavern where both of you are currently staying because you don't have permanent uh, homes in Bilgewater uh, but you haven't I mean I, I'll leave it up to you have you spoken I, I, to each I, other I, I, yeah we have for a little bit here uh, I, I was trying to uh, learn about the frail or he wasn't having any of it so but I go, hey, Frostman! <laughs> Frostman's here. Frostman. <laughs> I just, I just kind of turn away when he does that, right? I, I kind of grab my drink and kind of, I don't move, but I kind of like shift to the side, like. Uh. <laughs> uh, so uh, you, you actually mentioned that uh, he's an ice man, and uh, she Tala turns and goes, ah, for Lord, fucking hell. <laughs> no. Irish, dude. Right, right, right. Uh, ah, Freljordian. I, these, these, these fuckers. They, they know plenty about magic. Tell you that for free. They, uh, they. You know what? Actually, here. You know, I'll, I'll, t- I'll, t- I'll tell you all. I'll tell you all. That wreck I saw pulled, pulled in. There was a, there was a Freljordian man on the, on the helm of it, standing up there. And you know what happened to him? Turned up dead next day. Rest of the crew, missing, locked, held, held in the lockup, or just plain out dead. All of them. Everyone that brought, the, brought the whole ship in. Now she's verging into Trump. <laughs> um, so uh, she provides uh, some more information about what she was arguing about with um, uh, with uh, Dane. And this is a, a big text block, so I'm not doing it all in uh, Irish voice. Um, uh, so there was a ship pulled into harbor uh, two days ago called the Phantom Ire. That's not actually confirmed if it's the name of the ship or not there w- uh, the word phantom was printed on the h- hull of the ship but the rest of it was kind of crossed out people suspect that it was iron just based on how it was looks uh, how it looked um it was a absolute wreck of a ship in fact it was kind of sh- shocking that the thing even floated its way into the harbor um, but it was being pulled by a uh, ship with sort of strange markings on it that wasn't a it wasn't a pirate ship that really anyone in town recognized but it was definitely a bilgewater ship uh and uh sort of as it entered the harbor uh everyone that was working in the slaughter docks kind of felt a chill and uh tala was uh working as a scrapper on one of the ship uh h- hawking down something they had pulled from the depths uh and she was the one that got the best look at it and sort of been telling these tall tales about the ship ever since something about the ship is definitely off because as she has she's mentioned everyone that was on the crew that brought the ship in like all the day workers, not not the, not the owners, but like the people who are just working on the ship for the day, have all either gone missing, died, or are currently being held in uh, the lockup, which is this uh, town's prison, uh, for various reasons. Um, she explains that she knows deep in her gut there's something not quite right on that ship, and most and more importantly, there's something on that ship, and whatever it is, it's powerful enough to. Uh, and this is oh. a, this is a quote from her. <clears throat> Drag all of Bilgewater straight down into Nagakaburus' depths. Uh, she knows the ship is in the salvage yards, uh, out by where the dead pool, which is Gangplank's old ship that has since been detonated, is. 
Uh, that is, uh, so Basilio, yeah, Basilio, Ibrak, and Ak- uh, Akram, you would all know that, like, that is still part of the salvage yards, but since uh, GP's death, it's not really used that often, because in order to actually get in and out of that, you have to navigate around the big sunken pieces of the dead pool, which are actually removable, but people haven't moved them out of sort of refi- fear slash respect for the uh, Reaver King gangplank, especially with the knowledge that he is almost certainly alive. Yeah, but this is, uh, so it was brought over to where the Deadpool used to rest, um, uh, but she knows for a fact, and she sort of mutters this under her breath, that the Reaver King had nothing to do with this, and knows nothing about that ship. Uh, the ship never would have made it, uh, uh, the ship never would have made it to harbor if Gangplank was still in power, uh, due to his sort of, like, superstitious nature. <clears throat> Especially, uh, not for wanting to piss off the Baru, who aren't too keen with, uh, things being brought into harbor, just in general. Um, she heard that the uh, ship itself is out by uh, McCregan's warehouse or uh, kill house, which is a like a kill house is basically where they chop up uh, sea monsters and shit. Um, okay. But yeah, it's in it's in the old hauling dock of McCregan's warehouse. Uh, she does not know who the buyer is, but uh, she heard that basically someone in Bilgewater procured the ship for some a very expensive buyer who wanted to get something off of it. Is, hmm. is it is, are they implying it's an, an object or are they implying it's like a person? Unknown. This this wasn't okay. the ship that we did this like suspiciously easy job on, right? It is not that ship. Okay. And it was called the the Phantom Ire? Phantom Ire, I R E. Okay. Not to be used the Ire Land where uh Tala is apparently from. <laughs> <laughs> um she uh she suggests not finding out anymore, just to kind of leave it at that. But uh, mm. if you if you happen to have the intention of sinking the ship, which she would highly recommend, uh, if you want to do a favor to her and all of Bilgewater society, um, she suggests finding out who the buyer is because they might be able to give a uh, better inkling of what's actually on the ship. Once again, uh, she knows that it was a Bilgewater party that brought the ship into harbor for mm-hmm. someone else. The who the someone else is is completely unknown. To her, at least. Sounds like that ship was supposed to be Nagakaboros's and some bilge water and bilge water ins? Water Bilge rats. Bilge rats. Ooh. Better name. Yep. That's actually not sounds even like that's like build... generally what they are mostly referred to. Sounds like some bilge rats took a uh, thing that belongs to Nagakaboros. That's not going to go well. Uh, <sighs> hearing her tell the story for what is this, uh, apparently the umpteenth time. Uh, you sort sort of rumblings from the bar, uh, not necessarily in the same vein as <laughs> Dane's earlier annoyance, but more of like an unease. Like mm. people have heard it enough at this point, and they're starting it's starting to like sort of hold some water, and they're like kind of like, oh, okay, I don't, I'm just trying to fucking drink over here, man. I don't need to, I don't need to think mm. about think about the umpteenth doom come to Bilgewater this fucking month. Um, mm. and uh, Tala sort of recluses her, uh, recuses herself from the conversation and just goes, "That's all I. That's all I can tell you." What, what, what do I say? I mean, if you want to go find more, the world's your opportunity. And she sort of takes her drink and wanders away from the bar. Mostly staggering. Once again, very drunk. She, like, she was bloodied up, wasn't she? From the yeah, fight? she's fine. She doesn't really give a shit. Huh? <laughs> she, t- she, took a, she took a bum punch to the gut and then one to the face and then threw herself across the table. But like, and, like she is still bloody, but she doesn't seem to give a shit. Is more along mm. the lines of what's, what's going on in, in her life. Hmm. Is there mm-hmm. any chance Deltrum knows of like some sort of magical do how that's similar to this with some symptoms like this or so whatever? Actually, sort of. Uh, so on the boat you took in, uh, there was a Freljordian man uh, who you didn't like. You weren't familiar with his tribe or really much to do with him at all. But he he was dressed like a well-to-do Freljordi, and he had like a nice. Uh, he he might have been the a chief of a uh, tribe that's uh, sort of molded into Demacia or Noxus with the uh, like en- encroachment of the South, and is now more of like a more of a businessman than actually like a noble at this point. But uh, he he wore Freljordian uh, tribal attire, but it was more modernized. And uh, he mentioned to you, sort of just in like a casual conversation between like uh, Freljordans, that he was going to Freljord- he was going to Bilgewater uh, in order to look for something uh, <clears throat> incredi- uh, incredibly useful. He did not he used the word useful multiple times uh, in order to help his friends at home. Uh, and I actually need you to make a uh, investigation check in the past. Okay. <laughs> 
oh shit, hi, you can time travel. <laughs> Actually, I'll, I'll let you do investigation that's, that's, or perception, whichever you prefer. It's probably uh, investigation. I don't think it's matter. I rolled a two. Okay, <laughs> okay. You utterly believed this man. <laughs> Fuck, mm, man. I even have decent perception. Or in investigation, you would have to. I have okay. Yeah, I got decent. I got decent investigation as well. Fuck. Yeah. yeah. But uh, he insisted. But... He insisted whatever his purposes were was to totally help the homeland. Absolutely. Oh yeah. And you believe him? Mm -hmm. I bought into that. Delstrom's all about Freudians. He knows how to pronounce it and everything. <laughs> <laughs> do I? Do I know where he went anyway? No. He in fact did not get off the ship the same time you did. Okay. Um, mm. All right. <sighs> So as Tala walks away, Swar, uh, hearing the opportunity for something big and powerful, which is all he needs, he equates that to uh, big money. Uh, and, uh, I mean, that's fair. And uh, he sort of like strikes, uh, he, he fills the slot where Tala was just sitting, sort of like strikes around all of you. And he goes, all right, I'll, okay, okay, he, hear me, hear, hear, hear me out here. I, I, mean, I mean, it's <laughs> it's big and powerful. There, there's there's all kinds of, of I'm, I'm verging into Hayo's Joker impression, I just realized. Um <laughs> <laughs> there's a, there's a, there's there's plenty of plenty of buyers in Bilgewater, and it's just one more scuttled ass ship in the fucking harbor. All we have to do is get it, get whatever's on it, and then we have to we can either bring it to this alleged Mister Buyer, or I'm sure we can find another buyer. I got I have friends oh. in the, I have friends in the Soldiers of Fortune. I can I'm sure we can equate someone to try and give us a little bit of money for whatever's going on here. Yardo can find a buyer, no problem. <laughs> Who the uh, fuck Basilio. is Yardo? <laughs> no, he doesn't uh, uh, Third person. <laughs> Basilio is like, listen, if if we can make some quick, good money from this, then the sooner I can leave Bilgewater. I'm in. Any, anyone else I, have any input on this? I can get whatever object it is, find the buyer. And then we'll distribute the money that we think is fair, but I uh, I don't know if uh, you are particularly uh, invested in it as much as my comrades and I here, so we might have a bigger share. Horvus actually lean, leans over into, uh, into this conversation and just kind of mutters, power don't mean money, and goes back to his business. Silly is like, Referring yeah, to the, yeah. the noted power of the item. Mm -hmm. uh, it looks like the rest of the crew goes on and Delstrom sits at the bar and keeps looking into his drink like a goddamn idiot I'm, I'm sort of getting like slightly more and more frustrated as you guys are talking I'm trying to think about like what Deltrum would say though Trust okay, so, man, so, man, you have nothing better to do so, no, 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 enjoy no, no, life on. for once I, 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 I got that so Soar looks over at uh, Deltrum Akram how are you where are you sitting in relation to this lineup are you at the end um I mean, I think I was between Deltrum and uh, Wholesome? Wholesome? Uh, the bartender? Uh, he's behind the bar, so... Yeah, okay, that works. So, so Suarez sitting next to you. Uh, he, yeah. he turns to, to the, the two of you and uh, just goes, Look, worst case, it's a little bit of money in your pocket. Best case, we all find something we, we, we graciously need. You get to, get to send that ship back to Naga Kaboros, and you... <laughs> I don't know what the fuck your deal is, but <laughs> but who doesn't like a little money? You look like a uh, frankly disheveled man. Jesus. <laughs> I'm going to take that as an insult. It's I don't it's, know. It's notable that Swar is very, like, he has, like, a... He's a, he's charismatic, but you wouldn't say he's charming. <laughs> I, can re I can respect that uh, description. Yeah, yeah. Uh, that was my plan with... no. all along, Swar. <laughs> oh, I cannot wait for this. I'm, I'm ready. Brace yourself. Go ahead, Akram. I want to hear what you got to say. No, my plan all along you... was to give the ship back to Nagaka Boros. I'll go with you, but not for the money. And Swar claps. Like, ah, that's what I like to hear. That's, that's exactly what I like to hear. Someone that's not, not interested in the money. The, 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 it, 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 it's, it's bigger than the money sometimes. You got you to think bigger. My picture. share's going to the church, you dimwit. <sighs> Yeah, all right. That was, uh, that was, uh, yeah. I like le I like legit jobs, not chasing rumors. 
you all play around with power you don't understand. Ebrak, Ebrak, Ebrak. What, what, what have I steered? Well, what have I steered you wrong in the past? Minus all those Marvel times I've steered you. Ta- minus those times I've steered you wrong in the past. Roll a char- <laughs> roll a charisma check, motherfucker. <laughs> he has it really high charisma, so this is gonna be difficult. Yeah, I rolled a six. Oh, jeez, yeah, okay. Uh. As as much as you hate him, you have to note he tends to come through with the money. <laughs> and, and man, is he good at is he good at swindling? Fine. If this if the tiny thing and this other guy are doing it, I'll I'll go along because they helped me out in that fight. Referring to Yarno and Basilio. Gotcha. Hey. My first Bilgewater friends. That's interesting. <laughs> I never thought it would be a shark, man. <laughs> and I, uh, Basilio sounds like wait. I think the Freljordian was going to say something for <laughs> once. <laughs> He's a quiet man. <laughs> I'll come along with you. Oh. <laughs> Swar, Swar kind of leans in for a cut, or is this sort of like an academic interest kind of thing? You don't need to know what I'm interested in, but I will come along with you. <sighs> all right, all right, all right. Here's what, here's, here's, here's what we do. You, you five... Go try and go try and go try and find out the name of this buyer. You can't just bring a ship into harbor and have nobody know who's who's paying who's on payroll. Someone down by the slaughter docks has to know. And in case that this buyer turns out to be uncooperative or I don't know, look, it's fucking Bilgewater, a goddamn ghost or some shit. I I I I I, I will go and arrange a, a separate buyer, sort of drum up some interest around town, see what I can see what I, we can get for get for nothing, as it were. All right, all right, cool. I mean, <laughs> sure. I, I, I don't know how the customs around town are. Are we just just asking around the slaughter dock? So, Ibrak uh, uh, and Akram, you would know the best ways to go about this. Um, let like, me... is that invasive? I, I don't know. Like the fucking so sort of y- Yarno. This would be familiar to you in concept, but not in like actuality. Uh, money information is not free in Bilgewater. You either have to like cash in on a favor from somebody, or someone has to owe you something, or like you got to pay um, or of course there's the cl- most uh, classic of building artisans uh hustling some motherfucker down <laughs> um so let me see what i wrote here for okay so uh yeah I- I- ibrak and akram uh you would uh think that the best ways to go about this all- would be to um either ask around some of the pool uh the pools pools is a uh, g- uh, term for a gambling ring um, pool. Uh, because uh, pool sharks, who are the people who run gambling, they are not sharks. Uh, they are small, fuzzy creatures. Um, they are uh, known information dealers, but they're also known to be kind of expensive and kind of like they're they're more likely to gamble with you for information than actually just let you let you exchange for it. So that can be both good and bad, depending on how, how lucky you're feeling. Uh, and then, of course, both uh, Ibrak as a as a slaughter docks laborer, you would be able to go down the slaughter docks and find someone to give some sort of information. Uh, and Akram, uh, it's possible that someone at the Baru Temple would know, but you you can't necessarily know for sure. The dealings of uh, the slaughter docks in the Baru are like sort of intertwined by requirement and by like physical space, but they're not necessarily on the best of terms. Okay. And the uh, tensions are particularly high right now between slaughter docks workers and uh, the Baru due to the sort of tightening control of misfortune, sons of fortune on the town. Sorry, soldiers of fortune, not sons of fortune. Yeah. So, uh, gentlemen, for the second time in D and D, what do you do? Uh, I would feeling kind of lucky. I I don't know if 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 it's trying to push what we can do. I think I think we can swing the odds in a little bit of a uh, gaming. I, I I've been around the bend a little bit. I I know these humans pretty well. Uh, let's let's try to compete against them. A battle of wits. <laughs> against uh, who? Sorry, what are you suggesting? <laughs> I want to go to the fucking gambling hall, okay, man. Okay, uh, it's uh, Ibrak or Akram. You would note, note that uh, these halls are not run by humans. Oh, perfect. Never mind. Who are they Plus, run by? They are run by pool sharks, and I will pull an image of what a pool shark is. Yeah. You might, well, <laughs> tell me it's just a shark in a pool. No, it's not. <laughs> <laughs> this is a pool shark. Oh, oh that guy looks awesome. Really? What the... So it's, it's a good so card. Clean, though. It's not a good card in Legends of Runeterra. Yes, this is a card in Legends of Runeterra. Um, I 
would love to talk to that guy. It's kind of it's kind of like Yordle. <laughs> yeah, except less sexy. <laughs> oh. Absolutely. Or depending who you ask, more sexy. <laughs> App, even even better, Fisher. Perfect. <laughs> can I can I talk to the pre uh, talk to uh, uh, Mizuki? Yeah. Okay, so I like actively turn away from Yarno, and I'm like, <laughs> priest, have you ever seen something like this before? To me? About no, me? No, no to, to me. Uh, to Akron. Uh, define this, like the, the weird shippy thing, or the Yordle, or... <laughs> <laughs> to be fair, Deltrum not would the, have seen Yordles before. <laughs> not the Yordle. I'm talking the ship. Actually, all of you. This kind of effect on this many people before. Has it happened? That's a good question. Have I? <laughs> um, how old are you? late 20s yes you uh so i mean you've seen your fair deal of spooky shit uh most notably would be the last harrowing that hit bilgewater uh the harrowing is a uh to call it recurring isn't right it's it's a thing that happens every so often without sort of any any rational reason it just sort of happens uh basically uh spirits from the shadow isles creep across the sea and uh besiege the town basically um, the last time it happened was uh, a couple years back. I think I think the canon is six years, but I could be wrong about that. Uh, and it was fended off by uh, Alawi and Gangplank, so and, well and, and the rest of the town. Yes, you were memory. you were certainly okay. alive for it, and you most likely saw Alawi as she is like yeah. the head Baru priest at the priestess at this time. Uh, you know, driving you... driving back legions of spirits with her gigantic fucking uh, Nagaka Boros powers. <laughs> uh, yeah, I've seen worse than this. This this is definitely not the worst I've seen. Yeah. Uh, sorry. Quick question, Ibrak. How long have you been in Dogewater? How many years? Eight years. So yeah. So you've also like like yeah. some Doomsday is like a fucking regular occurrence in Dogewater. There's always a giant fucking sea monster or a pirate attack or a fucking like street war or some bullshit. Yeah, because I've been around. I've been around for the last era and for. Uh, misfortune disposing gameplay. Yes. I've been around for both those events. Okay. Yeah, no, this isn't even that unusual. Like, not even like, <laughs> not a rare occurrence. But it, it is probably worth note, and you would also know this that like when people bring things in that are like ever, ever, that gets the whole town in a in a tizzy. There's usually some artifact or something that is causing said like. There's uproar. usually some mm-hmm. truth to it. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yep. What? Surely this isn't the kind of thing you just want to give to some random street rat for a few coins. Well, obviously. Did no. you just call me a street rat? I can hear you. I'm just calling you a regular rat <laughs> now. Hold on, hold <laughs> stay on. Out of they're, my conversation. they're whispering. Although you do have keen yordle senses. Yeah. <laughs> I can fucking hear. <laughs> Got those big ass ears. Can you? Uh, maybe I just nod at that point. And I, I'm like lead on. Okay. So what is the what is the overall consensus? You guys are gonna go uh, to the gambling pools, or you guys are gonna go to the slaughter? I try to convince uh, Shark Teeth and Desert Dude to go to the gambling hall. It's from a jungle, but nice try. <laughs> are you talking about me? Yeah. <laughs> I was about uh, the jungle, baby. Jungle Boy and Shark Tooth. Yeah, jungle, uh, jungle, jungle James. You make the decisions. I'll follow. I'm. I'll, I'm. A, I'm, I'm a you're less piratey than you were before. I, I'm trying to nail this voice down. I, yeah. I haven't figured it out just yet. That's fine. I'm trying I'll, to do a. I'm trying to do a growl sort of thing, but I, I'm inconsistent on it. Right. I'll check with the temple and meet up with you all later. It's a lot easier for me to just walk up and ask the temple. <laughs> Priest, may I accompany you to the temple? Uh, I'm gonna just, I'm gonna suggest against dub- dividing up the party. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> because I haven't planned for that. <laughs> no, I, I'm gonna say, I'm can... gonna say, as, as Basilia is like, all right, um, why don't we make this democratic? There's five of us, so we can't land on an even number. Everybody in favor of going with the Yordle's plans, say aye. So, Swara leans back in and goes, what the, what the, what the, what the hell is democracy? And then he kind of just gets, gets out of the way. Uh, he does also mention that uh, he said to meet up back here after nightfall. Cool. 
So any any nobody votes for for Yarno's plan? Guys, uh, we Yarno's are pretty. We we know what we're doing here. Why don't we just we'll ask the temple gonna, since it's it. free and I'm a priest, and then we can go to the gambling hall if nothing happens. Or nothing's uh, I should also mention that there is there's a lot of temples of uh, Nyakabros in town. Uh, the one closest to Slaughter Docks is not your specific temple. Yeah, that's fine. I'm still a cleric. It's still going to yeah, be free yeah, for yeah, me yeah. to ask them for I, I just wanted to clarify. <laughs> I say those in favor of going with the priest say aye. 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 Hey. Aye. <laughs> I mean, obviously, I. <laughs> I don't care. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Just pick already. Seems like three to one with one abstention. <laughs> Count the abstention towards mine. <laughs> it also doesn't matter. To the temple. <laughs> yeah, but he but he, he needs that too. Right? I need it. <laughs> <laughs> Ebrak! You're just, yeah. All right. So, um... <laughs> Uh, so you separate with Swar, and the five of you head down to uh, the slaughter docks, um, sort of just walking straight down. As, as I mentioned, um, so the city is set up into uh, basically tiers. The higher you go, the wealthier you go. The, uh, the absolute top of Village Water are called the Eries, which is the actual, like, where you're not even in Village Water anymore so much as you're just on top of the cliffs that surround it. Fleet Street is only the third tier of Bilge Water, so it's very low to the uh, ground, with slaughter docks being the lowest. So you walk straight down, and... Um, you guys head to the uh, low side uh, temple of Naga Kaburos, which is a uh, more mixed temple. It's not a pure like Baru temple. In fact, it doesn't even have a actual uh, Baru descended priest that runs it. Uh, it's more of a temple that recognizes all of the faiths of Village Water, which is to say the people that actually worship Naga Kaburos as uh, she is, and then people that worship sort of like the spirit of the water or the spirit of the bearded lady, which is treated the same but not given the same name or held with the same sort of like fear, really. Um, uh, it's often where people come to pay their tithes before they head out on the water for whatever reason, unless they actually prefer to pay tithes to the water itself, which is kind of it's not frowned upon, but it's just it's not so much done anymore as it really just encourages more scrappers to go pull shit out of the water, which is the exact opposite of the point. Um, okay. So uh, the five of you enter the uh, temple. It's a stone, uh, sort of like rounded top building, uh, and it's relatively dimly lit with some uh, some candles and a faint uh, sort of glowing radiant, fl- uh, radiant, not flame, but just like a sort of radiant energy that hangs above a pool in the center of the floor. Uh, it's uh, Akram. You recognize this. This is pure light. This is a uh, a holy thing within the faith of Nagakaburos. And in fact, it is the Baru's people's job to bring this to uh, these pillars of light on the Shadow Isles ever so frequently to sort of reignite them, so to speak. Um, there is uh, the priest of this. Uh, his name is Briggs. Uh, he's having a conversation with a uh, sort of tall and gaunt man. Uh, and uh, everyone, roll a perception check. Hey. Also, technically, guys, if you want to take your passive perception, you're aw- allowed to do that. But I don't know what that means. You have a now passive you're perception. Twenty, baby. Nice. You have a passive perception on your uh, your sheet there, Ebrak. So it's just what you notice whenever you're just kind of like walking around. So sometimes we'll ask us for a passive if we just notice it, if we're not like intently looking. Mm-hmm. Yes, but because you guys are entering the room, I figure you're yeah. like your adju- your mind is adjusting to everything you see. So yeah. Uh, I got 21. a 21. Oh, wow. I got a 12. Okay. Everybody's killing it right now. Oh, I got a 19. Wow. Holy. Uh, I got a 14. Okay. So, uh, Yarno, Deltrum, and uh, Akram, you uh, notice that this guy is, he's quite tall. You'd say he's probably 6'3 or so, uh, but he, he, is a, he is a human. Uh, he has, his hair is, like, partially colored, not in the way that, like, it's, like, split or, like, he dyed part of it. It's almost as if uh, his hair is, for some reason, just discolored in a chunk of it. Uh, other than that, he has brown hair, but he has a, a sort of, like, a misshapen streak of uh, a dusty kind of uh, blonde. His left... Like, like a birthmark in your hair? Uh, it's something that, it's something that, it doesn't look like he's always had it, if that makes any sense. Okay. Um, uh, he's wearing a pretty well-made uh, pirate's cloak, something you'd see on a lot of uh, characters in Bilgewater, um, but it doesn't fit him very well. Uh, and in fact, one of the sleeves of it is has been torn off. It looks deliberately because it's been sort of cut, uh, and the arm that it is in is uh, wrapped heavily all the way from 
uh, sort of bottom of wrist all the way up to right beneath the shoulder. Uh, and it's wrapped in uh, bandages that have gotten quite dirty. But they're, you could tell that they're, they're not like old. They're still relatively mm-hmm. fresh. They're just dirty. Um, not not dirty with blood, just like dirt. Dirty with dirt, grime, general. Okay. Not not. He's still got a hand though, right? It's just yes. He has like he has his hand, and uh, on the hand in the hand, sorry, in the hand on that arm, uh, he has a silver tipped cane, with some sort of something is on the handle, but it's obviously covered by his hand, so you can't see it. And he is heavily leaning on that side of his hand, even though it, sorry on that side of his body, even though it appears to be the weaker of the two sides, as his other arm. I mean, as far as you can tell, it's in a jacket, but it seems to be fine. Um, Akram, uh, you don't recognize this man at all he, as a as a te- he's not he's not a temple goer, as far as you can tell. Okay. And uh, he's speaking to uh, the priest Briggs, and um, all of you over here. The, uh, sorry, uh, Basilian Brack, you did not notice his arm, uh, but you do overhear this bit of conversation as well as uh, everyone else does. Um, he sort of. Uh, He's not muttering so much as he has a just a kind of raspy hoarse voice, and uh, he admonishes Briggs and sort of says, "That light in the sky, you know what it brings, just as well as I do." And he slams his cane down, and he turns and he uh, hobbles out of uh, the uh, sorry the temple. Uh, he's he 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 doesn't walk with a limp, like he seems to walk fine, but he always puts the cane forward and pushes it really like. And he really secures it to the ground before he steps forward. Did he pay attention to us at all when he walked he, out? He like, acknowledges doorway? you with a look. Okay. Um, and uh, I'll, I'll give that a passive perception. Uh, he has very pale eyes. They're not like they're not fully white, and they're not like any distinct fully color. But they're like a very sunken and like almost, uh, unnatural, you would say, green. Hmm. Um, and he just sort of like gives you a one star. Doesn't like doesn't acknowledge you much, uh, and walks past. Is there is there anything else we should know about Sagarera? Um. <laughs> Fuck off! <laughs> you, you did a Sagarera <laughs> voice there. <laughs> I it was a good one though. Oh, that was great! It was great. <laughs> um, and uh, yeah, he he leaves and Briggs. He has like a towel for like w- wiping down the the pool area after. You know, people come in and splash themselves and all that business. Um, he sort of like tosses it over his shoulder and just goes, whew. Uh, I'm going to approach Briggs. Uh, yeah, Briggs uh, seeing you and <laughs> realizing, oh, hey, it's another fucking priest. Uh, opens his arms and sort of brings you in for a hug and kind of grabs you by the shoulder. Akram, how are you? How's the family? Uh, you know I don't know, but I'm fine. <laughs> he goes, wrong answer. We're all family here, buddy. Okay. <laughs> Who was the uh, man that was with the cane? Uh, the... I don't. I don't fucking know. He's some. He's some guy that apparently was trying to speak to Alawi up the temple, and she wouldn't see him. And then the uh, Tala's mother wouldn't see him. Uh, I don't know. He's apparently he's apparently warning about some light. I I have no I have no idea what he was talking about. Frankly, interesting. And uh, well, you, you don't need to roll for this. You, Briggs okay. isn't lying to you. You know him okay. well enough to know that he was. He has no reason to lie to you. What was he saying about the light? I heard he said like you know what it means or some shit like that. Apparently, he was out somewhere with another Baru priest. He refused to say the name, uh, which you know, of course, I'm going to be suspicious of that. Uh, and they saw a light in the sky, something cross the sky that apparently spells doom for Bilgewater. I mean, look, man, I, I, I literally get this seven times a day. Seven times? That's a lot. Oh, I mean, you know, we get crazies <laughs> to come in here and they're like, doom, we are doomed. And uh, as he does that, people in the temple kind of look over like, what the fuck are they talking Bilgewater about? Bilgewater seems like, very fun. Yeah. I'll just like wave the people <laughs> looking over off like, eh, don't. Don't pay mind to this. And uh, uh, I need... Do you have a coin on you, Mizuki? Or can you, like, roll a d10, I, I guess? I can acquire a coin. One sec. Okay. Flip it. Uh, call heads. I, I'm calling heads. Heads. Uh, he goes, oh, right, and this. And uh, he sort of, like, fumbles in his pockets, and he pulls out a little golden coin. You would note that it is not currency of Bilgewater. And he goes, and he, he, he insisted on giving me this, and I asked him if it was for a tithe. 
but he said I would should just hold on to it until then. I don't know what the fuck that means. Uh, looking over the coin, does it so, ring any bells? So he he shows you the coin. He actually just hands it to you flat out. Uh, uh, it is a coin with two faces on it. Uh, on one face is a woman wearing what is kind of like an armored not like helmet but it's almost like an armored shawl that has been pulled over her uh, and her actual face is obscure but you could tell it is a lady's face um, and on the other uh, side of it is uh, what can only be described as a fucking skeleton uh, it's, it, is a, it is a skeleton's face and uh, carved into the individual eye sockets of a face is a symbol which I am going to pull up for you guys there is a Ooh. there is this Ooh. symbol in each of the eyes of the skull. Have we have I seen the symbol before? Uh, have I seen the symbol? Before? Can I roll for Akram, anything? Akram, do you this? show this? Do you show the coin to your? Patriots? Oh shit! Uh, after I take a look at it, I will show it. Yes. Okay. Um, you... I have knowledge religion. If that is helpful. The thing is, it is a religion check, but I don't know if. I'm going to say you don't know what this is. Okay. Uh, sure. Why not? I'll kind of hold the coin up. Actually, with the... fuck it. No, that's not fair. Roll religion check. Okay. <laughs> I'm just gonna make yours needs to be higher. <laughs> Jesus. Uh, one sec. And nineteen on the die. Uh, Twenty-four. Wow. I mean, I can't not give it to you. Um, <laughs> so this is a this is a symbol uh, you commonly see, or it's it's not a it's not a Bilgewater symbol. It's not a Baru symbol at all. But a lot of people that come to Bilgewater, uh, not a lot, but some people that come to Bilgewater uh, wear this marking on like various like uh, amulets, or they'll they'll sew it into a piece of clothing. Uh, this is the symbol of the caretaker. Uh, hey. Who? That's actually okay. the only name you you know it by. Uh, it is a not a religion so much as a observed spirit on a lot of mainland Runeterra and some parts of Ionia. <clears throat> um, that is said to bring luck, basically. Okay. Well, it sounds great then. We're all good. We're well, lucky. you haven't. You don't know it exists. Akram, do you yeah, now want to? Show, na, na, do you now want to show it to the? boys yeah I'll, I'll show it to him being like ah. Every, everyone roll a religion or arcana check if you prefer hey, hey oh. i'll do an arcana check hell yeah i've dude. actually just been leaning against a wall somewhere i'm not even in this conversation I'm, Ibrax just, I don't, just smoking a pipe with his fucking shot yeah hand. i don't i don't give a shit about this i'm leaning against a wall somewhere waiting for us to leave and do something interesting so i'm not even gonna roll oh i got 19 yeah, I, got a, I got a 16 12 arcana check Okay, um, uh, sorry, what did you get, Yarno? Uh, 19. Okay, Ibrax, uh, Ibrax isn't, isn't rolling. Uh, Basilio? I got a 16. Uh, Asilio and, uh, sorry, Basilio and Deltrib, uh, you are both familiar with this as just, this is the sign of the caretaker. It is a thing you are familiar with. Um, mm -hmm. Basilio, no, actually, that's, that's all you guys know. It, it's a symbol of the caretaker. It's, it, it's a, it's a common spirit of, a uh, symbol of good luck. Uh, it refers to a spirit that, if, you know, some people believe in, but eh, it's a, it's a varying realness. Uh, Yarno, mm -hmm. you know this as a symbol of the caretaker as well. Uh, specifically, you know it as the symbol of bard, uh, hey, which is a, 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 <laughs> it's a, not necessarily a name so much as an archaic word used to describe it. It is translated from uh, what is believed to be ancient Targonian, but it could also be ancient Shuriman. Um, oh, perfect. That's uh, my real house it is right a, here. It is a symbol that you have seen all over uh, Shuriman deserts, uh, particularly in places that are were considered left behind by the Ascended and the other Shuriman uh, deities, for lack of a better word. Uh, it, it, it is uh, largely considered in a lot of places to be a an option as opposed to the regular religions. Okay. I, uh, as a, you know, practitioner of luck-based, you know, plays, I <laughs> will also indulge my comrades in what this actually means and try to clarify and help yes. let them know if they were a little bit at a loss. It's like, Bard, Bard and me! <laughs> I don't know Bard, but, uh, I, I do know what he, he strives for. Yes. Uh, I, I, have a, I, have a, I have a quick question, actually. Uh, Yarno, Basilio, and Deltrum, do I do any of you believe in Bard or the caretaker? As you was Basilio and Deltrum. Uh, 
I'm pretty sure I would. Yeah, so you, I, I believe he you, probably exists. You believe that he's, like, he's real? Uh, it's real. Yes. Yeah. Uh, I would say that Basilio is agnostic on that. Like, he, he wants to believe it, but it, he has not necessarily seen any proof of it. Right. I've seen some crazy shit, so I'm going to believe he's real. Uh, I absolutely think pretty much all the gods are real in some way, shape, or form. Uh, yeah. I should clarify, so. this is not a god in the way that... Uh, the Freljordan gods, like Valabar, Orn, and them are, you of course are aware of their existence. They do exist, and they are an active participant in the world. Not active so much, but they, you know, they, they're around. Um, <laughs> yeah, chill. The caretaker is known about, and like okay. people say that the caretaker steps in to basically keep the world on the right track, but it's not it's not an active, like, knowledge. Like, there's, n- there's no people that are like, I've seen the caretaker and lived! <laughs> Whereas people that are like, I saw Valabar, it was fucking wild. I guess I'm of the opinion that there's like greater gods and okay. lesser gods, whether or not they're uh, thought of in that way. I so I'm like, oh yeah, that god, of course, he's and real. Akram, There's I assume you only believe in Nagaboros. Yeah. I mean, it as is, a god, yeah, it is a, there, it is it's a probably the. Religion. I was gonna mm. say there might be an acknowledgement of like other powerful spiritual beings. Yeah, you but... you would more likely assume that it is a powerful spirit akin to the the uh, ruined king. Yeah, exactly. But the, as far as like God, no, no. There's yeah. there's one, and it's a giant kraken god. Hell yeah! <laughs> <laughs> With a million faces. Um, okay, and, and tentacles. Uh, yes, and uh, so Akram, you presumably turn to ask uh, Billy Briggs about uh, the the ship that was pulled into harbor. Yes. Know uh, anything about the creepy ship? I'm assuming you know which one I'm talking knows, about. Oh my, oh my kraken! Yes. I've heard about the ship. <laughs> everyone and everyone and their grandmothers come and talking about the ship. It was just a big admittedly quite green ship. It didn't look anything out of the ordinary. We've seen I've seen way worse things pulled into harbor. But yes, when it came in, there was this weird like it was like a storm front was rolling in, but there was no storm. Everything got cold, the wind picked up, and I, I swear all the wharf rats for once stopped chirping. I didn't even see a powder monkey running around, but after that, they pulled it out of the har- uh, through the harbor, and it was back to normal. It was j- probably just a weird gust. It happens. It's a storm Briggs. city. How old is Briggs? Briggs is uh, he's like forties, probably. Briggs, you're older than me. You know how this goes. You know how Bilgewater is. I know it's a superstitious place with a lot of people that confuse the uh, the bearded lady's will for a bunch of other bullshit. I just mean every time weird stuff gets pulled into Harbor and people talk about it, it's usually like a grain of truth. There's something there, right? Yeah, I mean, look, I saw I saw some soldiers messing around over there. I don't know what the hell they were even from, but then I saw some... Uh, <sighs> A couple of dry dock boys running back from the other side of the uh, other side of the water, out by the uh, the kill houses. But I mean, I, I can't say I really know much about the whole thing. Uh, dry dock is a term for people that do not go out into the water. <clears throat> um, it is a very it used to be an incredibly uncommon thing until misfortune took power, uh, and she's tr- sort of trying to legitimize, um, like you know, in town business, like people that like can make a living without having to go out into the water for whatever reason. Um, but dry dock is largely a pejorative term used to describe uh, gang members and pirates that are trying to make a living off of stealing and like like attacking other people in the streets more than what misfortune had intended. Um, and before he can actually give you information, you hear a deafening explosion that any Whoa, of you that no. have been in Bilgewater for more than a day have to recognize. That is cannon fire. And that is where we will stop for today. <laughs> I'll snap. Okay, okay. I like that little cliffhanger. <laughs> that was yeah. good. That All was right. clean. Welcome, welcome to D and D. They'll leave at cliffhangers a lot. I'm like, holy that's shit. shit! That's what you got to do. That's how you All play right. it. That Need was uh, going to be our first uh, around Runeterra, uh, around the tabletop <laughs> Runeterra D and D. We gotta, we gotta figure out a name for this. Around the Runeterra. We do. Around yeah. the Runeterra. <laughs> <laughs> that's awful. Right, but yeah, I understand some weird. of us have to dip. So we're going to call it here, and we will see you next time on Around the Tabletop. <laughs> <laughs>